Okay, I wanted to give a reminder here of these commands that we see on our Texas Instruments TI-83, TI-84 calculator. Um, and what they do, that we use them a lot in statistics, we've been using them for a while, uh, and we sometimes forget kind of what they do. So I wanted to do kind of a review, or maybe this is an introduction video for you for what these things do again. Um, normal CDF, and I really want to focus on normal CDF, uh, inverse norm, uh, TCDF, and inverse T. Uh, those in particular, those are the ones that we're going to look at. There's also the eighth item down this on this list is the chi-squared CDF, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but it, it does pretty much the same thing that the TCDF and the normal CDF do. But again, what we're working with again um, on inverse norm and normal CDF is we've got a normal distribution. It's that nice bell-shaped curve. Uh, with um, And typically we're looking at the standard normal distribution where the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. And what we've done when we calculated a z-score is we've converted from some other normal distribution with a different mean and a different standard deviation to the standard normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. That's what our z is. It tells us the relative location on our standard normal distribution. And this is a probability distribution. Um, what we're looking at is that the total area uh, is equal to one. The total area under this curve, boy, I just can't write today. Let me try that again. Come on, erase it. There we are. Uh, the total area underneath this curve is, is, is equal to one. And what we do is we'll maybe look at um, uh, what we'll get is we'll have two z scores, a z1 and a z2. Uh, and what I might want to look at is, is what's the area between these two values there. Um, and what that will tell us, it will tell us the proportion of uh, our population that's between those two values. So if I want to find the area between those two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the normal CDF. Uh, and you're going to start with the left-hand value, say Z1, comma Z2 in there. Um, and then some calculators ask you for more information about a mean and a standard deviation. When we've converted these to, to z-scores, we want to use the mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1 in there. So if I'm looking at, suppose this was negative 1 and this was negative 1.5, what I do is normal CDF, negative 1, comma, whoops, that can't be negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 would be the smaller number. Let's reverse those two and write them in order. Negative 1.5 is smaller than negative 1. So I want to go from negative 1.5 to negative 1. Um, and what I get on my calculator, let me just do this off to the side really quick. Normal CDF minus 1.5 comma minus 1. Uh, and I get 0 0.0918. And so about 9%, what I'm, I've got is about 9% of my values are within this range. Uh, but that's also a probability. So I know 9% of the area is between negative 1 and negative 5. I also know that, that nine, the probability of me choosing a number at random and ending up in that interval is 9%. Uh, it kind of relates back to, um, suppose you have a big bowl of candy. Uh, and you've got, you know, four or five different colors in there. And you know that maybe, say, 25% of the candies in here are blue. Uh, if, if I know that 25% of my population is blue, then the probability of me reaching in here and randomly pulling out a candy that's blue, it'd be 25%. There's a blue one there. Because um, I know 25% of my population is blue, then there's a 25% uh, chance of me getting a blue one. Of course, I'm looking, so that's, that's not random, right? So uh, my chances would be 25% of getting a, a blue one if my population is 25%. The same thing is happening over here is that if I know that 9% of my values are in this region between negative 1.5 and negative 1, then the probability if I choose something at random, it can have any possible value here 
but I know that 9% of my population is in there. So the probability that I end up in that section is um, 9%. Uh, and so a lot of times when we're doing T tests or Z tests, what we're looking at is we're looking at like maybe what's the probability uh, that I get, well, the idea is I've got a sampling distribution and I wanna know what's the probability that I get a sample mean of you know whatever, whatever value that is or more uh, and that's what I'm finding on my p-value. And that, that area is going to be the same as the proportion of values that we get from this normal distribution. You know, so if I've got, you know, if 3% of my population is up here, then I know I've got a 3% chance of getting a sample that's, that's that size or larger. Um, so if I know 3% of the population is up there, in there. So uh, normal CDF um, goes from the um, uh, so you give it a couple Z scores, couple of points on the X axis, and it will come up and tell you what's the area associated with that uh, in there. So uh, that's that one. Inverse norm now goes the other way. Inverse norm, you give it an area, and it gives you the Z score. So a normal CDF, you give it a couple of Z scores, uh, and it gives you the probability or the proportion of the, the population that's in there, the percentage of the population, you can turn that around with the inverse norm and give it the percentage that you're looking for or the, um, the, the value there. Uh, but inverse norm, it always wants the area to the left of z. The way it's, the calculator is designed is that it's always looking for the area to the left. So if I've got this normal distribution and I want to find where is this cutoff, what's the z-score, what's the point on this x-axis where I get 3% of the values here in this upper tail, the, the inverse norm, I have to feed it the percentage that's on the right. But that's always easy to find because I know that the total area is 1. And so if I've got 3% of the values in this upper tail, then I've got 97% of the values in this lower tail. And so I'm going to do inverse norm of 0.97. And if I pull that out on my calculator here, second distribution inverse norm of 0.97, I get uh, 1.88. So I need to go, uh, I need to have a z score of 1.88. If I go to 1.88 on the normal distribution, 97% of our values will be to the left of that. Uh, or there's a 3% chance I can get something greater than 1.88 if I'm choosing things at random in there. Uh, so uh, normal CDF uh, gives you the other thing. So a lot of times when we're looking at um, uh, confidence intervals, and that's what we're kind of looking at now, what we're doing is we're looking for, we've got a confidence level. What we want to know is, is like if I've got a, uh, 90, 99% uh, confidence le level interval. What I'm looking at is sort of how far out do you have to go on each side to capture from the center? How far out from the center do you have to go to capture 99%? Well, um, so I'm looking for, I'm trying to capture 99% here in the value, and I'm trying to find the z-score associated with that. So if I've got 99% in the middle, uh, that means I've got 1% unaccounted for, and that 1% is split equally between each tail. So there's going to be half a percent above this value and half a percent below this value. And so I can get that Z star by doing inverse norm of uh, 0.5 0.5 percent, which would be 0 0.005. You got to put it in as a decimal in there, 0 0.005 to get that z star to get the negative one. Inverse norm of 0 0.005, uh, and it comes out to be negative 2.576. Negative 2.576 would be the z star on the negative side. The positive side would be a positive one because they're they're nice and symmetric there. So the inverse norm goes from the percentage 
to the Z star and when we're looking at these confidence intervals a lot of times we're looking at that. Okay, uh, the T distribution um, pretty much does the same thing. Uh, we've got T CDF and uh, normal CDF and I've brought in some graphics there but I can do it maybe over here on the side. Our T distribution Um, what happens in practice a lot, to use the normal, normal distribution, um, we need to know the population standard deviation, uh, and a lot of times we don't know the population standard deviation. So we estimate it with the sample standard deviation, or so we know or we calculate uh, S and use it as an approximation. Uh, instead of sigma. We take the standard deviation from our sample and what we end up with is a series of distributions. They're nice and bell-shaped like the normal distribution uh, but th there's different depending upon how many degrees of freedom that you have. The more degrees of freedom the classer, closer you get to the normal distribution uh, in there that you have. Uh, uh, in there you've got the, the closer you get to the normal distribution the more degrees of freedom that you have. Um, but in general, by comparison with the normal distribution, the T distribution, if you go out to a particular value, if you go out to 2 on the x-axis, um, you'll get a greater area out here in this upper tail than you would in the, in the, um, under the normal distribution in there. So the probabilities turn out to be the uh, a same sort of thing. But TCDF does the same thing that normal CDF does. It's just working with a different distribution. So if you do TCDF... Uh, say from 2 to infinity um, and then you also have to give it a degrees of freedom to say are you working with the with this this curve or this curve the curve dip changes depending on how many degrees of freedom that you have um, and the degrees of freedom is just um, n minus 1 your sample size minus 1 so if I had a sample of say 40 I'd use 39 in here uh, on my calculator and what it would give you is this area here in this upper tail. Let me do that here real quick just to get it. TCDF 2 comma 99999 you do want to use a few more nines on the TCDF because you want to go to positive infinity um, in there uh, and you'll get a little bit bigger area. I get 0 0.0265 so I get 2.65% of my population is up here in this region above 2 uh, or so the probability of at random ending up there uh, above 2 is a 2.6% 2.65% 2 uh, chance of it going up there okay it's a little bit it'll be bigger than what you get by using um, normal CDF I think if you do normal CDF from 2 to infinity um, you'll get uh, 0 0.0228 um, you'll get a value that's a little bit smaller because there's a little bit more area up there uh, the fewer degrees of freedom you have the larger the, the difference will be between those two in there okay um, so TCDF again is calculating that area under the curve it's giving you the probability that you end up there because you're looking at you know 2.6 percent of your population is in this upper tail and so if you choose something at random the probability that you end in that upper tail would be 2.6 percent because the population is 2.6 percent all right um, inverse T works uh, backwards um, you feed it again the area to the left uh, or the you know the percent to the left and it will give you the corresponding t, the, the corresponding t value. The output from this will be the t that you're looking at. So um, if I'm looking for, uh, maybe if I want to do a confidence level of say, um, uh, let's do uh, 10 degrees of freedom, and I want to capture, um, so my so my sample size here would be 11. But if I got 10 degrees of freedom and I want to capture uh, 95%, uh, again, I need to look at the total area to the left. 95% of the value 
is in this middle range. I'm trying to find what's this critical T value here to capture 95%. It'll be a negative on one side, positive on the other. Um, uh, I've got 5% unaccounted for, so there's another 2.5% over here. So I can do inverse T of uh, 0 0.025 comma um, uh, 10 and it will give me the, the, the T star. It'll be a negative T star because it's a, a negative uh, come out a negative number because I'm looking here on the left side of the mean. Okay, now the, actually the calculator I have doesn't have uh, the T CDF built into it. So, um, uh, oh, actually it does. There it is. I must have upgraded it or something somehow or another. I've got it now. So if I do, no, it doesn't have TCDF. It doesn't have inverse T. That's what I'm looking for is inverse T. Yeah, my calculator doesn't have inverse T. Um, and so what I have to do is I have to result to the T distribution critical value table. And you should find that your calculator gives you the same number that you get out of the T distribution critical values table. Um, and what I want to look at, I've got, again, my, my confidence level is 95%. So I can come down here to 95%. Uh, and I said I had uh, 10 degrees of freedom. My sample size was 11. So 10 degrees of freedom in the 95% category. I'm going to get a T star of 2.228 would be my T star. And that should be the same number that you get out of your calculator. And what that is saying is that on the T distribution, the particular T distribution with 10 degrees of freedom, you have to go to negative 2.28 to positive 2.28 to capture 95% of the values uh, uh, in that interval, in that population with the T distribution. All right, so try those out. I hope this kind of helps get those understanding things together. Uh, and uh, well good luck oh actually if you go all the way up to the top of this you'll see that your upper tail probability is two and a half percent just like we found over here that our bottom tail is 25% because we're looking at the negative side it would be two and a half percent on the top side as well so a lot of a lot of um, T tables are organized this way some of them have the confidence level at the bottom and the upper tail probability at the top. Sometimes they're the other way. Or sometimes they have the confidence level at the top and the probabilities at the bottom. Uh, so uh, you can see that there.